Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So, I think it was last week I posted a video about my friend Yurik. Uh, Yurik is the skulls with the eyes that light up and they blink. And Yurik made quite the hit over Halloween. Uh, many people stopped, talked about it, pointed at it, were questioning how it worked. It's very, very cool. I actually received some comments in the comments of the video asking for more information on how the electronics worked. And so I had already planned to do a video on that, but um, this is that video uh, to kind of walk you through what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to Fusion 360, kind of show you some of the bits and parts and then cut over to, I think the Arduino application and kind of walk you through the code a little bit and show you some th things that I had to change and why. And then uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Adafruit uh, web page that uh, I had to kind of noodle through some of the details on. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's switch over to Fusion. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. This is Yurik. Yurik is very cool. I think you guys know this. Um, there's his eyes, but more importantly here in the bottom is this lovely little electronics cover. Let me rotate this around and the switch. So let me, let's see, let's, so these are the parts of the electronics. Now obviously in Fusion here, I didn't wire it all up, so you can't see how everything's connected, but I wanna to talk to you about the, the components here. So this guy right here, this is the battery. It's a LiPo battery. I got a 500 milliamp battery. I ran it, uh, I was outside uh, handing out candy for maybe three, almost four hours, continue to run no issues. So you can get a lot of time out of this uh, particular battery and this configuration. Um, switch here obviously just turns it on and off and I'll talk about that in a minute because there were some nuances there that I wasn't expecting. Uh, this printed circuit board here is the trinket battery charger. You just connect the this battery right here into the battery charger and then it it connects into the printed circuit board here so that when you plug USB in, it charges this battery. Um, and then when the USB is not plugged in, it diverts the power from uh, into the battery so it, it, it powers the device. Uh, this particular printed circuit board is a uh, itsy bitsy. This, this specific one is actually the Mega 32U4. It is the exact same footprint as the uh, Itsy Bitsy M4, uh, and I didn't uh, take the time and energy of taking the M4 schematics and converting it into um, Fusion here because I knew the footprint was the same. There we go. The key thing here is that everything kind of sort of fits in this little um, hole that I put into the skull. Now I will tell you uh, just this specific model, the hole could be a little bit deeper. It got a little sketchy with all the wires and trying to push everything into place. But uh, this electronics cover that I created and the switch here with this little indent um, works very well because uh, the skull you can see here can lay flat and you can still turn it on and off and the little screws hold the cover on. So that was two thumbs up. Um, Okay, so now I'm gonna cut over to the Arduino application and kinda just quick you walk through how to configure the code. Here we are in Arduino. Um, there are two files. It is the uncannies file and the config.h file. Now, if you're not familiar with C code, um, uh, the .h files are otherwise known as header files and they allow you to uh, set variables, declare structures, and a variety of other things. In this particular case, the key piece of information you need to know, there's a lot of gobbledygook in here that you don't need to worry about, um, but the key thing here is really the definition of the pins, and I've highlighted this right here, the pins that declare the part against to the hardware. Now this was my choice, I chose to put the uh, chip select for the left eye on pin 10, which is this guy right here. And I have chosen to put the chip select for the right eye on pin 11, which is this guy right here. Um, I put uh, negative one here for the blink uh, pin. We're, we're not using a blink pin. I didn't put any joystick controls or anything like that on this particular thing. And then the last thing here is the rotation, which I will talk about a little bit 
uh, later. Uh, the rotation here, so for the left eye, it's zero, which means it's, uh, it's straight up. And then for the uh, right eye, it is 180 degrees because the, the, the way that I laid out the, um, the eye holders is the, the OLEDs were actually facing each other, which caused the right eye. If they were both, if wires were coming both out of the same side, then they would both be zero rotation, but instead the, the wires are facing down into the center. Um, if I had to do this over again, I would probably just put each wire coming down the side so you don't have to rotate it, but that's uh, not something really to worry about. Uh, the other thing to note here is uh, defining the right driver. In this case, for me, it is the 1351 uh, for the OLED that I bought. Um, if you happen to get the TFT, uh, it's the 7735 thing here. And then I also chose for the uh, data command pin, which is pin 7 for me, and reset pin, which is pin 9. Now, these deviate from the default code because on the Itsy Bitsy, I don't have one laying around here, it's over there. Um, there is no pin eight. Uh, I don't know why, but there's not. And so that took a little bit of getting over. Um, next, I wanna switch over to uh, one of the library files. And for that, I need to uh, pull up a different editor. So standby one. Okay, so here we are in an editor. It's, it, it's called brackets, it doesn't really matter. I wanted to show you the uh, 1351 library that Adafruit has created. I had to do some modifications to this library. It took me, um, well, almost an entire week to figure out how to get uh, this particular set of OLEDs working with the M4. And here is why. Uh, so originally in the begin function here, uh, it was initializing the pins and some other things. Um, but it turns out, uh, and I'm speculating here a little bit because I haven't found the data to back this up, but that the M4 does not have uh, a weak pull-ups on outputs <clears throat> um, that are not configured properly. So what that means is originally this uh, code was down here at the bottom and actually kind of at the top, <laughs> or right here in this init function, which I had to create. Uh, it was leaving the inputs hanging. Uh, it would What it would do is it would configure the output of the reset pin and the chip select pin, um, and then go ahead and do the reset, and then not change the chip select to be high again uh, at, at the end, which is what I do right here. Uh, and because of that, it was relying on this kind of pull-up mechanism, which apparently doesn't work properly or doesn't exist on the M4. And so when I configured the second eyeball, both chip selects were low. So it was configuring the second eyeball and the first eyeball simultaneously, which caused all sorts of crazy things to happen on the actual OLEDs themselves. So I cleaned this code up uh, a lot, actually. I set all the outputs first, and then I did this little if statement here, which is part of the original code, I didn't change it. Um, and then I went ahead and I issued the reset, and then I, I, I pulled the chip select back high again, um, uh, forced it high. Now, a lot of this code here that is now in this init function was originally in the begin function, which means you couldn't initialize the OLED without hitting the begin, which caused all sorts of commands here to happen. Um, now I went through and I went through these commands. They are all good and they all make sense. Um, but this uh, pulling the chip select high and pulling the chip select low, low to start the command structure and high um, to uh, a a remove it from the chip select uh, mode were not necessarily in the code. So I, I was very deliberate and discreet about let's initialize it and then let's go ahead and begin the operation by actually sending all the commands. So that fixed the bug and it was able to get this thing to work. So with that, um, I will probably contribute this code back to Adafruit to see um, if they will accept it as a change. I probably still have some cleanup to do, but um, that's neither here nor there. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to the Adafruit web page, and I kind of want to walk you through the information they have on their web page and the things that I had to figure out on my own as a value-added service to you, my, uh, I guess it can be listeners, what would it be, my watchers? I guess you guys are my watchers. All right, so here it is. This is the Adafruit web page. Uh, if you don't have the URL, I can put it in a link down below. That's really not the point. You can Google it, um, animated eyes, teensy, and it'll come up. So this is the kind of the high level schematic they give you if you are using the teensy. Now this footprint and this layout is 100% wrong um, if you are using the M4 or the M0. It's close not close enough and I'm going to talk about why in just a minute so um, let me scroll down a little bit um, so they talk about how to attach the the backpack here which is the light pole uh, light poly battery charger thing that works perfectly fine I there's no trace that you have to cut on the M4 I did have to cut the trace on the actual backpack here so that it would uh, so the switch would work but uh, other than that no big deal um, here is where it gets interesting. So I, I had an OLED, so I connected, um, and, and also my OLED wasn't the exact device that Adafruit has here. I bought it um, on the Amazons and it said it was the same thing. It's just not the Adafruit version. Um, I did connect my uh, the, the, the data in and the clock and the, the chip select and the reset um, and this uh, OC pin, which is actually the chip select pin. Um, and this is where the, the, it says right here, nine or 10, um, in the default code, it was using eight for reset. I had to use eight. Uh, there's no eight on the, um, the M4. So I had to rewicker all that. Now here's where it gets interesting. It took me forever to figure this out. I had, uh, the VCC of the OLED, um, the power of the OLED had to be connected to the battery pin, not to the USB pin, uh, when you're using the backpack. I'm not entirely sure why um, it, that it wouldn't work when it's plugged into USB on either one, but it didn't. Um, it literally took me almost an entire day to stumble across this. I just could not figure out why it was not working. It wouldn't even power up. I, I did all sorts of tests and it doesn't really matter. I, I figured it out. Connect your power of your OLED right here to the battery pin of the Teensy or to the M4 um, or the M0, whatever you're using not to the USB plus. Um, that way when it is on battery, if you turn the switch off, the, 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 the lights go off and the power goes off. But if it's plugged into USB, interesting factoid, the microprocessor will be powered up, but the OLEDs will still be off if the switch is off. So you can actually program it and do things to the microprocessor without having the OLEDs on until you flip the switch. That's a little handy and also a little confusing. That's another kind of word to the wise from this configuration here. Otherwise, everything's very straightforward. For me, I created a header that had all these wires across the top and a couple things um, also that are not readily apparent from this web page. Okay, so there's really only one pin in all of this wiring that the two eyes do not share, and that is the chip select pin. That is this guy right here. Uh, it's called OC on the web page uh, in the code, I believe. Let me switch over. It's called, uh, let's see, where is it? It's in this little array here. It's this guy right here, 10 and 11. Um, on my specific OLED, it was called CS. Uh, I believe it was called CS chip select, uh, if I remember properly. So you got to interpret your specific layout, your specific set of parts to the uh, environment that you're operating in. But uh, let me let me just be clear, right? So the data in, which is Mosey, the clock, the um, the reset, the VCC or battery and ground, these are all shared pins. The, in fact, the uh, data command uh, pin here, DC, uh, I, I forget what it's called in the code here. Let's see, it's called DC, okay, data and command, um, is also shared. So really you end up with a harness, uh, seven pins per device where six of the pins are all tied together and one of them is not. So it becomes a little challenging. Uh, what I did is I, I took one header pin and I forked the wires this way, right? Um, and if I, hopefully you all can see this. Um, 
this is the, let me, how do I explain this? So these are the header pins that connect to the, uh, to the M4. And these are the pins, the seven pin headers here that get plugged into each one of the lot, the eyes. And you can see here, there's these two pins right here are the only two, this is the chip select left and right, are the only two that are not shared kind of common wiring um, from the pin structure here. And I know this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, um, quite frankly, looking this on the video, but uh, what I will tell you is it doesn't matter because you have to make one of these for your specific implementation. In my particular case, I use these little eight pin headers and seven pin headers just to push it down on the, um, let me grab this, uh, push it down on the, on the, the microprocessor here. And then it creates this nice little, not so nice, um, but connection. Now, what I would tell you, I used um, Cat5 wire in the prototype and, this non-flexible, non-stranded wire was really hard to work with. I do not recommend it. I recommend using stranded wire. I also recommend, if you can see this, let me, there we go. Okay, so you see this. Um, uh, you want to use, see where the wires are connected to the actual pins? Uh, you want to put heat shrink tubing on this. Um, this particular configuration, this microprocessor is utterly bricked. I don't know what happened to it. Um, I stuffed it all in the little hole and something got crossed somewhere because I didn't put heat shrink tubing on, it, uh, tubing on any of this stuff and it shorted something out and it is what it is. It's dead. This entire configuration is trash, uh, <laughs> but it is what it is. Lesson learned. Okay, so hey, I really hope you appreciated this video. I hope you got some understanding of the hardware. Um, again, this code is not mine. I basically used it almost essentially unchanged, except for the debugging I had to do for the M4, which took a long time. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you liked the video, thumbs up, I appreciate it. If you don't like the video, what the hell, give me a thumbs up anyway, pardon my French. Um, if you're not already subscribed, I would appreciate a subscriber. I've done the statistics recently. I mentioned this in my last video 98.6% of you are not subscribed. <clears throat> so I do appreciate you watching. I would also appreciate you subscribing. I would love to get to a thousand subscribers, uh, for lots of different reasons. Nevertheless, um, I will leave links to the code below and to the website below. I will also leave links to my social media. If you have not already checked out my Instagram, I do a little bit of posting there, not a whole lot. I do tweet quite frequently, um, so I'd appreciate a little Twitter action there. And then I do have a web page, uh, which I'll be de debuting some stuff on in the future. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can do that as well. All right, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and have a great night.